5, Lewis and Clark County will not be approving large events due to the recent spike of COVID cases. Plus, the plan for dealing with the continued surge of COVID-19 cases in Montana is still an overriding issue in statewide campaigns, especially in the contest for governor. From Montana's News Leader, this is MTN News at 5. Good afternoon and welcome to the News at 5. I'm Jessica Nelson. Thank you for joining us. We are going to start this evening right into weather. Curtis, you've been busy. Yes, uh, and uh, everybody hopefully is busy preparing for this storm as well. Uh, this will be a record breaking snow event, also coming with record cold. Now, this is Montana. We're used to some pretty significant winter storms but not this time of year. It is only October and uh, look how much of the state is under either a winter storm warning or a winter storm watch, which will likely be upgraded to a winter storm warning. Heavy snow, we'll talk snow totals coming up, but I don't want people to just focus on the snow. Think about how cold it will be here. Heading into Saturday, this is the feels like temperature, essentially the wind chill value. Numbers will be dropping through Saturday, Saturday night into Sunday. Some wind chill values may be close to 20 to 25 degrees below zero here. This with a foot of snow on the ground and it will be a very, very wintry weekend. And by Sunday morning, I think uh, many of us will be waking up to actual air temperatures below zero. So record snow, record cold, but a, but a warm up is on the way. I'll have more on the full forecast in just a few minutes. The state reported another record day for new COVID-19 cases in one day. The state of Montana reported 932 new COVID-19 cases, bringing the statewide total to over 26,000. Almost a third of those cases are currently active. There were three new deaths reported overnight, bringing the statewide total to 293 active hospitalizations dropped overnight to 353. Now MTN numbers do vary from those reported by state officials. We track data from the state and local health departments to give you the most up to date information available. The Lewis and Clark County Board of Health met earlier today and the major topic COVID-19 and new efforts by public health moving forward. Due to the recent spike in cases, county public health will not approve plans of any event over 50 people. And they're telling everyone they should wait until a later date to hold larger events. A new tool by Georgia Tech allows communities to see real time the odds of COVID exposure depending on crowd size. On Thursday, a crowd size of 100 people in the county had a 99% chance of someone having COVID and a crowd size of 50 was around 91%. Public health will also be making an increased effort to encourage people to stay home when they're sick. Our data is showing that many of the cases that we're seeing in our county can be directly linked back to people going to work sick. So employers need to support um, employees who call in and say that they're having symptoms and that they need to stay home. And employers also need to be sending their employees home if they do come to work sick. The CDC also updated their definition of close contact for COVID. It now includes anyone that has spent a combined 15 minutes of time with someone less than six feet apart during a 24 hour period. With less than two weeks until election day, the plan for dealing with a continued surge of COVID-19 cases in Montana is still an overriding issue in statewide campaigns, especially in the contest for governor. MTN chief political reporter Mike Dennison gives us the latest on what the top candidates are saying and doing when it comes to this pivotal issue. Earlier this week, Democratic gubernatorial candidate Mike Cooney convened a panel of national health experts to talk about the status of vaccines for COVID-19 and what states should be doing to prepare. He followed that up with a list of his priorities, including leading by example, such as wearing a mask, social distancing, and avoiding large gatherings. To say just personal responsibility and opening up the floodgates gets us the results we see today. With numbers climbing, with deaths climbing, that's not personal responsibility. That's a not-so-subtle shot at his Republican opponent, Greg Gianforte, 
whom Cooney and his campaign have chided for rarely wearing a mask at public gatherings and for suggesting a passive stance on public health mandates. When asked whether he would maintain the governor's current emergency order and mask mandates for many counties, Gianforte has demurred. Instead, he's been saying he'll follow the advice of public health professionals and community leaders without being specific. If I was your governor, we would be focused on keeping the most vulnerable safe. We'd be relying on personal responsibility, not government mandates. He's also suggested that earlier shutdowns this spring created what he calls an economic pandemic that Montana needs to recover from. Health experts at Cooney's meeting said vaccines should be available within the next several months, but that it will be important to decide who gets it first and how, and to encourage people to take them. Cooney said if he's elected, he'll start work immediately on a distribution plan for the vaccine and a public information plan. He also said he'll work with hospitals, local health departments, and even the National Guard to ensure Montanans are keeping safe during the winter before a vaccine is available. Vaccines may not be with us all that quickly. I'm working on a plan right now to make sure that we keep Montanans healthy by doing the things we need to do, getting a vaccine, deploying that vaccine the way it needs to be deployed in Montana. Gianforte says much the same, but again, hasn't come out with specifics saying it's too early to know what will be needed come January. January is a ways off, but with Montana reporting record daily highs of new cases and winter approaching, this virus doesn't look like it's on its way out anytime soon. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Of course, Montanans are voting right now on the governor's race and many others. And as of Wednesday night, almost 290,000 Montanans had already cast their mailed ballots. The city of Helena has a new top administrator in place. Rachel Harlow Schock is the new city manager. Monday was her first day on the job. Rachel comes to Helena after a long career in Colorado. She was most recently the state's deputy director of local government. She says she and the city commission have talked about three main priorities, building relationships within the city and beyond, maintaining financial stability and creating a strategic plan for Helena. What I really am uh, appreciative of in Helena is this balance of preservation of our past and really being innovative and, and putting a lot of thought into our future so that it is balancing the history with the future and not losing what makes it special. You can hear more from Harlow Shock in our full story tomorrow morning on Daybreak. All right, when we come back, Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenance breaks down our cold and snowy forecast. And later, the stage is set for the second and final presidential debate before the election. We will have a preview up next. Her weather starts now with Chief Meteorologist Curtis Grevenance. All right, welcome back, everybody. We've got a snowstorm headed our way. It's not just snow. It's also going to come with record coal. Let's take a look at the snow forecast here from tomorrow afternoon through Saturday. Yes, this is going to be a lot of snow and some of you probably looking and uh, reading Helena. It's going to get anywhere between 6 and 16 inches. Well, we have a lot of elevation changes here around Helena, so there will be 6 inches of snow out in the Helena Valley, out where the, there's a hole in the valley, so to speak, and we don't get a lot of snow, to as much as 16 inches of snow into the hills around town. A lot of us will be waking up to snow here on Saturday, upwards of about a foot uh, coming down. Great Falls, not as much elevation change, little lighter amounts of snow north of town, but uh, generally in Great Falls, I'd expect about a foot of snow when all is said and done. Cup Bank, upwards of 10. Lewistown also right around a foot of snow. Lighter amounts near Haver, certainly lighter amounts near the Glasgow area. Great Falls right now uh, had a little sun poking through, but boy, 19 degrees with uh, as much as six inches of snow in the Great Falls area from last night into this morning. Helena, some nice blue sky. Nothing out in the valley really as far as snow goes, but there was five, six inches of snow into the hills around town. Hence the big difference, the big variation in uh, snowfall that can occur here. 31 degrees currently in Helena. Look at the temperatures. Arctic air certainly for October is uh, moving into the state here. Teens, 20s and a couple areas currently in the 30s. 
Showed you this before, winter storm warning, winter storm watches. The watches likely will be upgraded to a winter storm warning, but generally in the warning area, 6 to 16 inches of snow. 2 to 6 up on the high line, 6 to 12 for Interstate 90. The heaviest of the snow likely be right here in the central part of the state. The radar, pretty quiet right now. After a snowy night to last night, that storm is moving out into the plains. So here's what will happen tonight. Skies partly cloudy. That will allow temperatures to get very cold tonight. Approaching record lows here tonight. And uh, it's not even the coldest part of the air mass coming in. Tomorrow, you've got the morning hours and early afternoon to get out on the roads before they start to become snow covered. Once the snow starts around Helena, three, four o'clock, same goes for Great Falls, a little later for Lewistown and Haver. Once that snow starts, it's going to come down at a really good clip. So it will accumulate quickly here. So road conditions, travel conditions will deteriorate quickly. Through Friday night, that snow continues to fall, coming down heavily at times through Friday night and most of Saturday. Notice how Glasgow, even out there up around Haver, not as much snow coming down here. But uh, here's the accumulation. Not much tonight, tomorrow. It's tomorrow afternoon and evening that the snow starts to pile up. And then here we go into Saturday afternoon where you see this shade of pink at least six inches of snow. We're talking closer to nine, 10 inches where you see that darker shade and maybe a few spots up along the Rocky Mountain front could be upwards of 15, 16 inches of snow. Tonight, look at these cold numbers. Eight or so in Great Falls, two in Cup Bank, three in Chester, Chinook dropping below zero tonight, Turner dropping below zero, few spots, Northeast Montana will be down below zero, single digits for Central Montana, single digits and teens around Helena. Here's the forecast for tomorrow, low pressure, increasing the snow in the afternoon and the evening, temperatures cold, teens and 20s for most locations. The snow becomes heavy at times Friday evening through Friday night into Saturday. And look at these high temperatures, teens way down into the teens with wind. Wind chill values could approach 15 below zero to as cold as 30 below zero. Sunday, Arctic high pressure moves in. The storm moves out. Sunday morning, a lot of us waking up to temperatures below zero. Highs only in the teens and the 20s in spite of all the sunshine and then Monday. This is when things will start to change. The valleys likely will be inverted. We'll see uh, a Chinook start to develop here and Great Falls going well up above the freezing point by the middle part of next week. Helena snow increasing tomorrow afternoon through the night and through all of Saturday. We drop below zero Saturday night and Sunday night inversions keeping it calm, but also the cold air trapped in the valleys next week until about the middle or latter part of the week and Great Falls. Dangerous travel conditions tomorrow night and Saturday. Very, very cold, but look at that switcheroo with a warm up up into the 40s and 50s Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday of next week. Tonight's final debate between President Trump and Democratic challenger Joe Biden offers a high stakes opportunity for the candidates to deliver their closing arguments before a huge national audience. Alice Barr is in Nashville, Tennessee with what to watch for tonight. With the candidates arriving in Nashville and the plexiglass barriers in place, the stage is set for a presidential debate like no other. It's the last chance before Election Day for President Trump and Joe Biden to make their case to tens of millions of Americans looking for the clear policy discussion lacking in the last chaotic debate. Biden has an opportunity to prosecute the case against Trump. But Donald Trump has to make that case that we're going in the right direction and stick with me. Amid questions over whether the president will soften his tone. Today he's choosing to pick a fight with CBS News. The White House releasing its own recording of a 60 Minutes interview the president claims showed bias, hatred and rudeness. The network defending what it calls full, fair and contextual reporting, releasing a preview clip in which President Trump cited the economy over coronavirus as his top domestic priority. To get back to normal get back to where we were, to have the economy rage and be great with jobs and everybody be happy, 
and that's where we're going. CBS also releasing part of a companion interview with Biden, who has avoided answering whether he supports adding justices to the Supreme Court, now saying he wants a bipartisan commission to study court reform and keep the high court from becoming a political football. Presidents come and go. Supreme Court justices stay for generations. Debate already raging before the candidates ever set foot on stage. In Nashville, Tennessee, Alice Barr, NBC News. Coming up next on the News at 5, can you trust the polls? We'll break down the process and what has changed since 2016. Montana's news leader. You're watching MTN News at 5. Welcome back with us. Tonight is the final presidential debate and the polls for the most part are showing Joe Biden leading ahead of the final contest. But after 2016, can you trust the polls? Joe St. George takes a closer look at the process and what has changed in the last four years. I don't even look at the polls. I didn't look at him four years ago. I don't look at him now. Perhaps you feel like David Bartlett. When he's out to eat and talking politics, he has no time for anyone that brings up the latest presidential polls. Four years ago, it was supposed to be a landslide Hillary victory, and what happened? So is Mr. Bartlett right? Are polls irrelevant, or can you actually trust the polls? To find out... Patrick Murray. We interviewed... Lee Maringoff. Two of the nation's most respected and experienced pollsters, Patrick Murray of the Monmouth University Polling Institute and Lee Miringoff from Marist College Poll. I think there's a lot of benefit. Miringoff still views polls as a useful tool, revealing which issues matter the most to voters and also... A source of information beyond just what the candidates and maybe even the media are offering about a race. For Patrick Murray, polls provide a public service. Polling gives us a window onto who we are as a people. But the polling industry knows they have a credibility problem. Thank you all so much. With recent critics tracing the issue back to 2016. For instance, in Wisconsin, the day before the election in 2016, Hillary Clinton had a six and a half point lead in the polls, according to Real Clear Politics polling averages. President Trump would go on to win the state. The problem that we had in 2016 was not that polling was any more inaccurate than it had been in the past. It was just that the inaccuracies happened to be in one particular direction. What pollsters now know is then candidate Donald Trump persuaded white voters to break with long held predictable voting habits and vote for him. Polling samples that once represented the population at large no longer did. Pollsters say they've since adjusted. Some say the polls didn't account for the so-called shy Trump voter or President Trump supporters who are reluctant to reveal their candidate preference. Our experts disagree. There you go. The so-called secret Trump voter doesn't exist in terms of polling. That brings us back to our original question. Can you trust polls? So the polls, you know, can be trusted not to sway you necessarily, but to inform. I think the idea behind averages is a good one because there always is going to be a range of, of results. As for David Bartlett, well, it's going to be what it's going to be. In Washington, I'm Joe St. George. All right, up next, Christmas will be here before you know it. I will tell you how to schedule your call with Santa. When we welcome our West Coast viewers, one of the last airlines to block off middle seats because of the pandemic is about to sell them again and new science that may support them. Plus, we'll meet the hero cop and see how his body cam captured a fiery, life-saving rescue on Nightly News. News Leader, you're watching MTN News at 5. The pandemic is even forcing Santa to get creative on visiting kids before Christmas. The website chitchatwithsanta.com allows families to schedule a call with Santa. The calls can last anywhere from six to 10 minutes, but they will cost you $28 if they are booked before December 1st. There is also no limit to the number of kids or family members that can participate in each call. Families can also enjoy story time with Mrs. Claus. Hard to believe that Christmas will be here soon. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Nightly News is next.